Welcome to Monster Remix. This is where I take D&D monsters and I mix them with some different ingredients that give new styles and new abilities. This time, going into the Transmutation Cauldron is the Ogre Zombie that we all know from the Monster Manual. The Ogre Zombie is a pretty cool monster. It's a big, dumb brute, a big, dumb, undead brute that bashes creatures with a Morning Star or Great Club. It's pretty dangerous if low-level creatures go toe-to-toe -to -toe with it in melee combat, and it has that undead fortitude trait that we all know from the zombies in 5e that makes it stubbornly hard to kill unless you take it out with a critical hit or radiant damage. So it's a pretty cool monster. I like the style of it. It mixes the giant and the undead theme together, but after you run it a couple times, it does get stale pretty fast. Now let's imagine an ogre named Ramshackle. Ramshackle served as a jester for a giant king. He was a comic oaf, you know, a real buffoon, and he always walked around with this funny and creepy hand puppet. Well, as it turns out, Ramshackle eventually met his demise and was slain by adventurers who were taking part in the great games of the giant king's hall. Something strange happened after that. It turns out that this ham puppet was a cursed thing that was created by an ogress witch, and it zombified Ramshackle. <laughs> the ragged and hollow laughter can be heard echoing through the tunnels and caverns of this mountain. What I've done with the stat block here is I kept the baseline ogre zombie, but I removed the generic club weapon or morning star weapon. I added two things. First is the hand puppet. The ogre zombie jester can use this cursed puppet like a sort of Mr. Punch. When it smacks a creature, the target takes psychic damage and must succeed on a DC 14 wisdom saving throw or become cursed. A cursed creature is overtaken by clumsiness or dizziness. It suffers disadvantage on all ability checks, saving throws, and attack rolls based on dexterity, and it cannot hide or use stealth. The curse lasts until removed by the remove curse spell or other such magic. The curse can also be broken if the person who created the ham puppet removes its stitching. Enhance ability Cat's Grace neutralizes the effects of the curse while the spell lasts. My thought behind the curse was that I wanted something that could lead to storytelling or a side quest to go track down the one that made the cursed puppet, whether the ogress witch that I mentioned or some other NPC that the GM created. I also wanted something that could impact the gameplay in a substantial way. Dexterity is a popular ability score, especially in 5e, so putting a hindrance on it is an unexpected complication that the characters are going to have to work around. The zombie's other attack comes in the form of its wicked sickle. On a hit, the target takes slashing damage and it has to make a DC 14 dexterity saving throw. On a failure, the target falls prone and the zombie can use a bonus action to make another sickle attack against that target. So the wicked sickle is made to combo with itself. You hit, deal damage. If the target fails a save and falls prone, the zombie's second attack is made with advantage because the target is on the ground. The balancing factor here is that if the target succeeds on the deck save, it doesn't fall prone, the zombie doesn't get that second attack, and the sickle in the end did less damage than the standard ogre's morning star or great club. I imagine that in combat, the ogre zombie jester is going to use the hand puppet on a creature first and then switch over to using sickle attacks against it. I've also created a couple of combat encounters that use this monster. The first one's called Zombie Troop. It's a bit more straightforward. It features one of the ogre zombie jesters and four zombies. I've also put here the estimated difficulty depending upon the party's level, so it's probably ideal for a third or fourth level party. These estimated difficulties are assuming a party of a typical four or five characters. If you have three characters, it is going to be harder or you could remove a one or two of the monsters. If your party is bigger, like six or more characters, just know that it's gonna be easier or add in some more monsters. The second encounter is called Curses Abound, and it features an ogre zombie jester along with two mummies. And the mummies, as you know, they also have curses with their rotting fist. They impart mummy rot on a creature that fails its save. So this really is a curse type encounter, 
You'll probably want to run it in a smaller chamber so that the characters are up close to these shambling undead melee brutes. And uh, yeah, there could be a lot of curses that could result from this encounter. If you'd like to grab a copy of the Ogre Zombie Jester, I'm putting the stat block of it up on my Patreon for free. And then in the upcoming October newsletter, it's going to be in there as well. And I'm going to develop its lore a little bit more for that. So make sure if you're not already subscribed to my newsletter so you can get notified about that. Or if you want to support me and my channel and show me some love, become a patron there on my Patreon. There's a whole bunch of exclusive content that I put out every month. Or visit my online shop. I've got my big 5e book there, as well as adventures and other supplements that I put out. Links for everything are down in the video description. Thank you very much for watching, and uh, watch out for shambling zombies and curse-wielding ogres. And as always, may your adventures be many.